also breaking tonight. A showdown at the border, the likes of which we really have not seen, as President Trump calls for our military to get down there and protect it and links all of this to the future of NAFTA. We're going to be guarding our border with the military. That's a big step. We really haven't done that before, or certainly not very much before. But we will be doing things with Mexico, and they have to do it. Otherwise, I'm not going to do the NAFTA deal. So the Mexican government tonight is asking for some clarification on exactly what that means from the White House, despite this from the U.S. ambassador to Mexico just last night. We certainly understand the concern not only that President Trump has, but people in the United States here have about immigration. And uh, I have to say that Mexico is now largely a country that receives immigrants. It's, uh, it's a source and a destiny of immigration. So we, we understand this very clearly. Such interesting comments from him last night. So this is the caravan from Honduras disperses in part in Mexico. And there are reports that more than 100 immigrants have boarded a train that is headed to the United States. So here now, Brandon Judd, president of the National Border Patrol Union, and Juan Hernandez, former advisor to Mexican President Vicente Fox, who is a frequent critic of President Trump. Uh, and let me start, actually, by showing both of you this tweet from Vicente Fox. He says to President Trump, to militarize the southern border is to provoke more hate and distance even further our nations. Somebody has to talk some sense into him. He's elevating his hate towards Mexico, causing a greater conflict. And yet, Juan, you know, you heard from the ambassador to the United States from Mexico last night. He said, we get it. You know, we have we have the same kind of problems and we, we want an orderly immigration system. There's there's every reason to understand why Americans and the president might be alarmed at what's going on. Well, yes, but I was expecting that President Trump, after Easter Sunday, would have a little bit more of a, of a, of a humanitarian Christian attitude. I mean, we're talking about a few hundred people, some say up to 1,200 people from, South, uh, from Central America, mostly from Honduras, that are they're looking for, for some type of, 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 of hell, of asylum in the United States. They're not going to invade the United States. They're in a crisis in Honduras. They, if they don't get into the United but States... What? Juan, I, I, Juan, I understand. Them, let, let me just jump in for a second. Juan, I, I, I understand where you're coming from in terms of wanting to help people and wanting to help people is a great thing. The United States, I think, is probably the most benevolent nation in the world when you look at aid it that is, goes to other countries. But it doesn't yeah. really matter if it's only a few hundred people or if it's thousands of people. What we heard from the ambassador to Mexico last night when he spoke with Brett was that Mexico turns back tens of thousands of people back over that Honduras border. So, I mean, it, it just is it sort of raises a lot of questions about the process here. I mean, imagine if people were coming, you know, across the United States border from Mexico, and then buses and caravans were being arranged for them to go straight into Canada. I mean, is that something that you would expect Canada to be okay with? No, of course not. But but the attitude, I mean, President Trump saying that he's going to have this, what do you call it, a, a build the wall at any cost. We're talking about your friends south of the border. We're talking about Mexico. That Mexico and Canada are the closest allies to the United States, apart from the millions of people who have blood from Mexico uh, living in the United States. Mexico is not a, a nation of enemies. I have no, never I, I don't think any, no one is suggesting a, that a, Mexico is a nation of, a of enemies. We're talking about the constructive of a, of way to nation. deal with this problem. I'm sorry if I'm stepping on you. I think we, we have a little bit of a delay in the signal. But I want to get Brandon Judd in, Judd in here. Uh, the Border Patrol Union president with your response to, you know, what, what we've said so far, Brandon. Well, what you have to look at is you have to look at what we need to do to, in fact, secure the border. And if you're a fan of border security, you have to appreciate what President Trump has done to this point. He's put an awful lot of time and awful lot of effort. It was his no number one domestic policy when he was campaigning, and he's, he's followed through on that. When he talks about putting the military on the border, we've done that before. President yeah. Obama did that. Uh, we did that during Vicente Fox's time as president president in Mexico. Absolutely so true. he's not he's not escalating any hate. He's not escalating any discontent. What he's trying to do is he's trying to secure a sovereign nation from people that are crossing the borders illegally. If they want to come here and claim asylum, let them do it properly. Let them do it lawfully, but that's not what what's happening. Why would it, it, that that's exactly again what the ambassador said last night Juan is that it, there needs to be a lawful 
Pro the I, you know what? No one can hear you if you don't wait for me to ask you the question, and then I'll, I'll wait for you to answer. Um, no. That's exactly what the ambassador said tonight, that there should be a process. There needs to be a process. You can't just have an open border that people can cross whenever they want or need. Go ahead. You're right. Yes, you're right. And since 2014, just as an example, Mexico has put in, in, in place what is called the Plan Frontera Sur, in which they have detained thousands and thousands of people from Central America coming into Mexico who are on their way to the United States. So once again, Mexico is not the problem. Mexico is not the enemy. And just uh, by the way, uh, you know, Mexico is going to have elections this year. They will have a new president, most likely Ricardo Anaya, and he will stand up to Trump. But he will also be a man who will be able to discuss business, will be able to discuss a better relationship with, with Mexico, but without the insults that President Trump keeps directing towards the good people of Mexico. Brandon? I, I'm sorry I couldn't hear him very well, but what I will tell you <laughs> is, is that with the military It's true on the that border, your audio isn't that good with respect to Brandon, <laughs> so it's, it's not that he didn't hear you, it's that he literally didn't hear you. Brandon, go ahead. Yeah. But if you look at if you look at putting the military on the border, uh, we're not actually talking about putting them in an, in an enforcement posture. That's the border patrol. That's my job. That's border patrol agents' job. It's our job to actually determine determine whether or not somebody is here in the United States legally. What they do for us is they free up our resources. If you look at this multi-billion-dollar industry, what the smugglers and the cartels do is they cross these asylum seekers, if you will, um, across the border illegally instead of through the ports of entry. Country. And what that does is that ties our hands because we then have to respond. We have to take those individuals into custody. It takes manpower out of the field and it leaves gaps in the border, which then allows the smugglers to run their higher uh, profit products oh, through the border, like opioids, uh, drugs, yeah. and other contraband. And so the smugglers know exactly what they're doing and they're using these asylum seekers as pawns. That's why we have to do something to secure the border so that we have a, a an orderly immigration process. And without that, we're going to continue to talk about this year after year after year, and it's always going to be a topic of presidential campaigns. And, and, it and I needs think, to you, end. you know, the president is unique in that he is not averse to tying trade agreements and other economic discussions to the issues of the security of the border. Um, and my guess is that you're going to see a response from Mexico that says, let's work together in some way on this. So we'll, we will see. We will see. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Good to have both of you with us tonight. Bye -bye. Thank, thank you. you. So Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein giving Robert Mueller the thumbs up to dig into Paul Manafort's business dealings that happened a long time before he joined the Trump campaign. So what about the scope of this investigation? We've learned quite a bit about that tonight. We'll bring it to you. Ed Henry joins me in a moment to answer some of those big questions that have arisen today. Coming up next. Also, President Trump says that he wants to pull our troops out of Syria. General Jack Keane says we should not repeat the mistake of President Obama that led to the proliferation of ISIS in Iraq and Libya. I want to get out. I want to bring our troops back home. I want to start rebuilding our nation.